welcome back in this lecture we are going to introduce talk about contour integration and homotopy theory so what are curves in complex plane this is a definition which is also true for any euclidean space so a parametrized curve is a continuous map gamma from some interval of r to the complex plane c this interval in r could be an open set closed closed interval open interval it is not necessarily bounded interval it could be unbounded interval as well and what this gamma does is that for each point on in the interval it associates a point in the complex plane so as you move along the interval here you move along some curve on the complex plane so the, so this gamma is called the parametrization of the curve now what is a regular curve a regular curve is where the gamma prime t is non zero for all t basically this means that uh, the velocity suppose you think of a particle is traversing this curve then the velocity of the particle is uh, never zero these are the curves uh, which are um, more uh, very useful i mean so this assumption is very useful because even to talk of length of a curve and so on you assume that this is non zero and to ensure that the uh, so, so this also ensures that the tangent vector is more is moving smoothly or transitioning smoothly uh, along the curve so these are all some uh, advantages of this you also have curves where gamma prime t is non zero so you call them irregular curves something like you take y equal to x uh, the cube root of x square will have something like a cusp at the origin so at the origin so gamma prime of zero for that curve will not be will be zero okay so there actually the tangent becomes uh, infinity and then from plus infinity to minus infinity it shifts and then it moves and so on so there is a jump in the tangent vector so the tangent vector doesn't move smoothly so we are usually in the setup of where the curve is curve is a regular curve and what is a contour a contour is a union of finite number of smooth curves so you have different curves you can patch curves at the end and you can get a uh, contour and what is a loop so actually i don't have to say closed loop loop itself means that it's uh, closed so what is a loop a loop is a curve so loop is a curve such that its end points are same so it starts from a point it comes back i mean it goes around and comes back and reaches the same point that means gamma a is equal to gamma b so such a curve is called a loop or a closed curve closed curve or loop and you say a loop is simple for the simple closed curve or simple loop if there is no self intersection when you may, in the sense that for any s and t between a and b so a and b yeah, so a comma b is a domain of the parametrization here right so for uh, if you exclude the end points for any interior point the curve doesn't intersect that is it doesn't take the same value so it only intersects at the end point so it starts at a point it never intersects itself and then comes back to the same point so that's called a uh, simple loop now there is a very nice property about the simple loop or simple closed curve which is called the uh, jordan curve theorem so once you have a simple closed curve in the complex plane c then the complement of the simple closed curve is a disconnected set and has exactly two connected components one bounded component 
which you call the interior and the other unbounded component which is the exterior so you have a curve so this black this thick black line that you see bounding um, which is the boundary of this colored region this is the simple closed curve that is given to you so the complement of that is this colored region in the interior and the outside region here that is a disconnected set with exactly two connected components one outside one inside the one inside interior part is a bounded component the one outside is the unbounded component okay when i say inside outside i mean the area enclosed by i mean the region enclosed by the curve i am calling it as inside and the outside is the complement of that inside so jordan uh, curve says that any closed curve will separate uh, the C into two disconnected, uh, two uh, so two connected components. And this looks very uh, obvious and simple. You might you must have seen a proof in your topology course. If you have not seen, you can pick a book like Munkers or Dugunji or something. And these topology books should have a proof of this result it's not a very uh, it's not a very trivial proof and though the statement is very trivial and seems very intuitive it's not a very trivial proof um, but if you think that you i mean if you think i mean from this image if you feel that yeah it looks very obvious think of an image like this uh, so see this region first here this is the this is a closed simple so this is a simple closed curve right now is that statement true does it uh, divide the um, c or r2 into connected component it's not obvious unless you color the interior region even to use computer to color this region you need a mathematical proof right so this is not a very uh, obvious proof or something but uh, but it's a very simple statement and intuitively seems true you need a really a non-trivial proof um, so here so the usual idea behind this proof at least uh, that's how it's uh, so this was first given by proof was first given by Jordan though there is a controversy that Jordan's proof is not right and the first correct proof is at, attributed to Veblen in 1905 I suppose 1905 but then uh, Jordan's basically Jordan had assumed the result for uh, for the, for um, for a simple closed curve which is uh, made of polygon uh, which is a polygon or uh, at polygon lines and so on but I don't think I mean there is a I don't think uh, Jordan was uh, completely wrong in any case it, he had uh, good insights into the proof and so on so the idea lies the way you prove this and you know, the idea lies is that if you pick a point uh, outside this curve right and if you pick uh, if you pick another point somewhere wherever right suppose you draw a line segment from that point so, uh, so let's say let's say you pick a point in the interior so let's go to the color region let's pick a point in the interior and let's pick a point in the exterior okay and if you draw a line segment from that exterior point to the interior point if that line segment is from the like from an exterior point to interior point then it will cross the curve odd number of times if the line segment crosses the curve even number of times then then the other point is also in the exterior for instance here you see the colored region is the interior and the white region is the exterior so take a point in the outside take a point in the colored region if you draw a line from here to here you have exactly one intersection with the straight line here which is an odd number which means it is connecting and from the, uh, so it's connecting inside point to outside point 
you take a point here which is actually outside the white region is outside to the outside to the um, curve and then take another point here this is also outside and if you draw a straight line it will intersect the curve two times which is even number of lines so this is the kind of idea that was used to give a proof of this and so on so like in the previous lecture we did not prove the Riemann mapping theorem as of now um, and I asked you to check if you're interested please uh, you can even one of you can even can uh, give it as a presentation for this course similarly you can also take Jordan curve theorem as one and try to give a presentation of the proof of this and so on okay later in the in part of the course if we do everything if we can do the proof of these results we will prove we will we'll try to do these proofs okay now once you have this concept of any simple closed curve can will will divide the plane into two parts which is a bounded part and unbounded part you can give a notion of orientation to such curves so a simple closed curve is said to be positively oriented or you say counterclockwise if moving along the direction the bounded component is always to the left so as I, as I said the simple closed curve divides the region divides uh, divides the plane into two parts one bounded region and the other bounded region so you say that direction as positive when if you go along that direction the bounded uh, component is always to to your left okay. you can also give a mathematical uh, uh, definition of this basically what mathematically what it means is that uh, here I am giving the definition in the sense that if you take the position vector and if and for every for a for a for a sufficiently small epsilon and for all t the position vector plus uh, epsilon times the normal vector lies in the bounded component okay in other words what this means is that uh, once you have the, see once you have gamma then you have gamma prime t which is the uh, which is the tangent vector and then you have the normal vector okay when I when we say normal vector here it is the uh, positive so if you rotate the tangent vector along the uh, counterclockwise direction or in the positive direction 90 degrees what you get is the normal vector. so this tangent vector and normal vector actually also forms a basis if you notice this so the orientation of this uh, tangent vector normal vector basis is same as the original basis of r2 if you are in r2 or okay or uh, as or that 1 0 and 0 1 vector right uh, whatever orientation that has then this tangent vector and normal vector also has the same orientation if if that happens then then that direction is the positively oriented direction so usually it's the it's so it's so usually it's the counterclockwise direction okay now you can always choose a parameterization to fix an orientation for the curve so the same curve can be traversed in one direction and also can be traversed in the other direction right? you can, which is the positive direction the negative direction for instance if you take the circle simple circle this gamma t cos 2 pi t sin 2 pi t is uh, prescribing the circle in the positive direction here so if you if you see here uh, since this is the direction if you and any position vector on, on the circle is here so which means the tangent vector is in this direction right tangent vector is in this direction which means that the uh, positive normal direction is inside here there is a normal direction here and this is this is precisely the orientation in which the basis vectors are so they have the same orientation as the basis vectors so this is called so this direction is called the positive direction and the same circle can also be denoted by a different parameterization 
uh, which will give you which will orient the circle in the opposite direction that is this is the negative orientation that so this cos 2 pi t minus sin 2 pi t will prescribe the circle in the opposite direction this is the clockwise direction in this case you see the in this case you see the tangent vector is uh, here okay which means that the uh, normal vector is uh, here and their orientation is uh, opposite to the orientation of the basis vectors okay so that's about orientation now what is contour integral or path integral so we, so we are in the complex plane and uh, we are interested in knowing the value of a function along along a curve and so on so it's a, it so it's called the path integral or contour integration uh, contour integral so we so you want to integrate or you want to sum the value of f where the z where the uh, so sum the value of f along a curve so if gamma is the curve then uh, integral of f dz is defined by integral of a b so this is precisely the by this composition right so any point so here i am actually uh, using uh, uh, abusing notation gamma is also the parameterization and um, we are using gamma also to denote the curve in c so it, it denotes both okay so gamma is so gamma is the curve and gamma t is the parameterization so any point on the curve is the z so z is any point on the curve and any z on the curve is is image to some t under gamma so it's some gamma t so f of z is f of gamma t dz is d of gamma t which by chain rule is gamma prime t dt this is the usual riemann integration okay so this is how you define the notion of integral for uh, a function uh, from C to C which is the integral along a path or, or along a contour as I said we are uh, uh, using gamma to denote both the curve and also the parameterization and this is the um, meaning whatever I said so z is an element of gamma which means z is gamma t so dz by is gamma prime t dt so what is this proper what are the properties of this path integral right the first thing that uh, we need to check is that the contour integration is independent of the choice of the parameterization of the path right we have already seen as even in this case the same circle has two different parameterization but here here we gave for different orientation but you can also have different parameterization of the curve uh, preserving the orientation right you can uh, for different uh, well, like 2 pi t is one you can also do pi t 4 pi t and so on right there are different parameterizations for for any curve that is how this notion of regular curve or gamma prime t not equal to zero you can actually choose a what is called the arc length parameterization uh, uh, which is which is kind of unique where the length of the curve is same as the length of the domain that you choose okay like for instance see here the length of the domain is uh, the domain of gamma is 0 1 so length is 1 here whereas the length of uh, this is 2 pi which is not same but you could you could actually choose a 0 comma 2 pi uh, interval here and then you can choose cos t comma sin t here that will be the uh, arc length parameterization of the circle okay so you have more than one parameterization so once you define this notion of uh, path integral for a function on a curve you should verify that the path integral is independent of the choice of the parameterization okay so that i leave it as an exercise to you uh, it's an easy exercise using chain rule so you have you you have a two parameterization for the curve 
use the composition packet and actually get one uh, show that the interval over one path is same as the interval over the other path. Secondly, this is the trans so transversing a curve in the opposite direction. So if uh, gamma is a curve that is given to you, then minus gamma will represent the same curve but in the opposite direction. Which means if uh, the starting point and end point. See, you see, when we gave the parameterization of uh, any curve gamma, uh, any curve gamma as gamma from A B, the starting point is gamma of A, and the end point is gamma of B. So the, uh, the so the curve starts at gamma of A, goes on for all t, and stops at gamma of B. Right. So that is how you do. So minus gamma will do the other way. It will it will start at the end point of gamma and it will end at the start point of gamma. So that is transversing the same curve in the opposite direction. So that minus gamma denotes that kind of a curve which is the same curve in the opposite direction. And the property of the path integral is that if you integrate the function on the same curve but with the opposite direction then that uh, then the integral over that opposite direction curve is nothing but minus of integral over the curve gamma. So this is a property of path integral. This again you can uh, verify and check by this again by some change of variable. You can actually write down the once you have a parameterization for the curve gamma, you can write down a parameterization for minus gamma. For instance, the parameterization of minus gamma can be given by this map. So, so gamma is a map from a comma b to c. So gamma is uh, starting at a and ending at b. And so now here you are giving the parameterization to the opposite direction where it's from zero to one. So you will see when you when you take t to be t to be zero. The, so the starting point of gamma minus is zero. So t to t is zero. So when so gamma minus of zero is actually gamma of b which is the end point of gamma and the end point of this which is t equal to 1 is gamma of a which is the starting point of gamma so you have the opposite parameterization so you can use this information and you can actually uh, show that you have this property for path integral the next question is the about path independence in the sense that suppose I take two points on the complex plane let's call it z1 and z2 there are infinite paths between z1 and z2 right there are lots of curves which will join z1 and z2 so for example let's take two points gamma 1 and gamma 2 so if I compute the contour integral or path integral from al along gamma 1 and if I also compute the path integral along gamma 2, are they same? Right? There is no reason to expect this, right? Because the integration is over all the points on the curve. The integration is over all the points on the curve here. And these are different curves, so there are different points. So there is no reason to expect that this happens. Which means, if, and if it doesn't happen, that means the path that you choose matters when you integrate along the path, which, which seems to be a natural thing to expect. So, are they path independent? Is, so, so, is the, uh, so, the contour integration is path independent or not? And this question is same as the following. Suppose I take two points z1 and z2, I take the point gamma 1, I take the point gamma 2, then by choosing this opposite direction for gamma 2, that is z2 to z1, uh, so gamma 2 is z1 to z2, it means minus gamma 2 is z2 to z1, so minus gamma 2, and I take union of gamma 1, union gamma 2, so gamma 1, union gamma 2 is now a closed curve, it's a loop starting at gamma 1 using the positive oriented it's going along the positive anti-clockwise counterclockwise direction and comes back at z1 so if 
you have two different curves joining the two points you by changing the opposite direction you actually have a closed closed curve or a loop at z1 so gamma is a loop at z1 then the question of path independence whether the integral of f along this path the same as integral of f along this path is equivalent to saying that the integral along this loop is zero because if the integral along this loop is zero that means the integral of gamma 1 union minus gamma 2 is zero which is integral of gamma 1 equal to equal to integral of gamma 2 which is precisely this so this question of path independence is same as asking whether the function whether the contour integration of the function along along closed curve vanish okay so they, they so these are equivalent question so one can answer this instead of this they are same now as an exercise you can do this what we know is that for a continuous function f on any domain f admits single valued primitive in omega if and only if the integral is zero so whenever the contour integral over every loop in a given domain is zero for a function suppose you have a continuous function on a domain omega domain is open connected set so if you have a continuous function on a domain omega then the integral over any and and if the integral over every closed loop is zero then it means that the function admits a primitive okay equivalently if it admits a primitive then the function then the integral over every closed loop is zero see this is motivated from your fundamental theorem of calculus see fundamental theorem of calculus tells you that integral of f prime integral over say a b suppose you have two points a and b on the real line then integral of uh, integral of f prime from a to b is f of b minus f of a right and if the value of f is same at a and b then integral of f prime is zero right this is something which we know from fundamental theorem of calculus and here you see for closed loops so for closed loops gamma of a is gamma of b okay so suppose this function admitted a primitive which means let's say capital f is the primitive of this little f then this is integral over capital f prime okay so integral over capital f prime you use the definition of contour integration rewrite this in terms of integral over a b because if they are close to you can show that this integral is zero so this proof is actually easy if you if you assume that f admits a primitive then you can actually show that this integral is zero the converse is also bit little more work but can still be done um, the way you start with this is that uh, so for uh, so for converse what you do you so you take uh, so you define this function capital f so since little f is given you define this function capital f as uh, so let's say f of so you fix a point so you fix a point uh, some common point let's call it uh, some z naught or something on the curve let's say right you fix it on the curve gamma um, z naught let's say so if you fix a point z naught on the curve gamma then you define capital f of z to be the integral of f from z naught to z okay so capital f of z is the integral of uh, integral of little f from z naught to z which means uh, you have a capital f definition now now you want to show that this capital f is the primitive of this little f so what you should check is that the derivative of the capital f is little f so to check the derivative you need to start with uh, the definition that is f of say f of z naught plus h uh, or f of z plus h minus f of z over h this limit should exist and it should be equal to f of z so you start with f of z plus h minus f of z 
by definition you will see that it is actually the integral of uh, integral of this little f from z to z plus h right that is how you will see you will see that from z to z plus h and z is a point z is a point z plus h is a point so what you have uh, what you have obtained is that the fraction that portion that you write for the definition of derivative for capital F is equal to 1 over H of some integral of little f where this integral is from z to z plus h. Suppose you think of z1 as z and z2 as z plus h. Now it is given to you that over every closed uh, for every closed interval for every closed loop uh, this integral is 0 which basically means as I said before that the contour integration or the path integral of f for any uh, between two points z and z plus h is path independent right so which means that you can choose any path in this integral the value will not change from this definition so with, without loss of generality you choose this uh, straight line joining z and z plus h and if you apply the limit there you will see that uh, that limit will be equal to the value of f at z okay so that's how you do that. i've actually explained the entire proof though i've given it as an exercise but if you try please fill in the details since I, I'm, I don't know if you have understood the proof but i've given all the details here it's not difficult to prove so what i wanted to highlight here is this fact that the first the path independence of contour integral is same as saying that for every loop the integral of the function over every loop is zero and this condition the fact that if i mean a function's integral is zero is equivalent to saying that the function has a primitive right so there is a function which is differentiable and its derivative is this f which is a very nice property so you just remember this property integral zero also means uh, that there is a primitive and this is what plays a major role in later sh uh, telling you that the uh, that a holomorphic function is actually infinitely differentiable like because it has primitive and so on okay so some prototype example take gamma to be the unit circle and uh, k to be any integer and look at this complex polynomial z power k and we have already seen that uh, for all k positive this is holomorphic and for all k negative this is holomorphic except at zero right we have already seen that so take the unit circle uh, which is centered right unit circle centered at origin that's what i mean here when i say unit circle i mean take the unit circle centered at origin then look at the integral of zk dz over gamma right so what we are so we are so we are talking about functions whose integral is zero in the previous slide. So let's compute the path integral of this. So by de, by definition, if you use the polar form of this, because you are on a unit circle, the magnitude is one. So you have uh, in the polar form you have this this definition, and if you use the uh, contour integral definition you can write this as an integral of 0 to 2 pi so you have this and if you integrate this you have this value that it's 0 for k not equal to minus 1 and for k equal to minus 1 it's 2 pi i okay and uh, from the previous exercise i told you that whenever the integral is 0 then it admits a primitive in this case when k is not minus 1 the integral is not 0 the reason because there is a primitive but it's a multi-valued primitive so unless you restrict the region you don't have a primitive so you have to restrict your domain so the k equal to minus 1 has a multi-valued primitive so in a sense it doesn't have a well-defined primitive for k equal to minus 1 so it's very fine that example in fact uh, this is uh, so i am calling this a prototype example because see, you see the cauchy theorem which says that some holomorph for holomorphic functions the integral over in a closed curve zero is precisely a generalization of this result 
that for k not equal to minus 1 you have 0 and the Cauchy integral theorem which tells you that f of z is 1 over 2 pi of uh, integral of f of z minus z minus w over d uh, integrated, in, uh, so integrated over dw over the w variable is precisely this result. It is the generalization of this result. So, this is the Cauchy integral formula for the function for the constant function 1. Right? So, that those results are actually motivated from this prototype example. So, this this result is what is generalized by both by Cauchy theorem and Cauchy integral formula. So, this is an example to show that the result is not true for all. So, it is here the integral is 0. We are giving an example here where the integral is not 0. See here this was a holomorphic function except at 0. Okay. But here it failed. I mean the integral was not 0 for k equal to minus 1 because this had a singularity at z equal to 0. Okay. In fact, for, uh, not just k equal to minus 1, this had a singularity for uh, um, for all negative k, but for k equal to minus 1, that singularity which was sitting inside the closed curve played a role. So, it might look like that the that is what is causing this problem, but that is not the case. For instance, um, in this example, you see, uh, take this point minus 1 and uh, take this number of complex number minus 1 and complex number i and look at this uh, straight line joining minus 1 and i which is this gamma 1 and look at this uh, arc of the unit circle which is gamma 2 okay which is also joining minus 1 and if you look at which is the red color thing and uh, this you can see so gamma 1 minus gamma 2 is a closed curve Okay, gamma 1 minus gamma 2 is a closed curve. So, you look at this function mod z square and integrate on along this closed curve gamma 1 union minus gamma 2 and you will see that it is not 0. So, this example basically tells you that uh, whatever we are going to see later that you need the assumption because this fails here because mod z square is not holomorphic. Okay. So, so this and this example here is basically the prototype for the major theorems that you see in complex analysis including Cauchy residue theorem and so on right that's how you define i mean how do you define residues of a uh, function right it is all it's also all motivated from just from this example and this is what is playing a role uh, in those in those results i mean this is an uh, intuition or motivation to look in to go and prove results like Cauchy theorems. Okay, now we were talking about um, points joining uh, curves, closed curves, and so on. So let's look at a topological definition. And uh, we had used this notion of simple connectedness even in the Riemann mapping theorem. We had no used the notion of uh, simple connected sets, right? So we will give that definition here and we will end, end the lecture with that definition. So we say two paths or two curves gamma 1 uh, and gamma 2 are homotopic in a topological space. Uh, if there is a continuous map T which is now a function of two variable uh, 0 1 cross 0 1 to x. So x is a topological space. So I am giving the most general definition here. Okay. So if there is a continuous map T. Um, from this square to the topological space x such that uh, so let's say uh, this is the so the first variable is t and the second variable is s so for each fixed t the um, for sorry um, for year uh, for s equal to 0 and t varying it uh, this is precisely the first curve gamma 1 and for s equal to 1 this is the second curve okay so what i mean is uh, it's easy to see in the picture here that you see this is the gamma 1 curve here and the one is the one here is the gamma 2 curve here these are two different curves here and uh, 
from the same point so their starting and end points are same okay to pass gamma 1 gamma 2 joining two points okay now you see so you say the uh, so they are homotopic if you can continuously deform one curve to the other curve that's what this map means so when you say continuous map you can continuously deform okay so this 0 1 cross 0 1 is this square that means you see here this line this is the parameterization of gamma 1 so this map is the parameterization of gamma 1 okay similarly this map here is the parameterization of gamma 2 which is and that parameterization is given by the uh, t variable right t variable is the parameterization of gamma the one curve first curve and second and t is and t is denotes the parameterization of all these curves and these intermediate curves are the deformations of these curves so you can continuously deform these curves to go and lie with the other curve right this continuous deformation is so this deformation is parameterized by the s variable so each s denotes a different different curve so s equal to 0 denotes the first curve gamma 1 s equal to 1 denotes the last curve gamma 2 and every s in between is the deformation of these curves and that deformation has to be continuous which means t has to be continuous both in the t and s variable this is the definition of uh, so whenever this happens you say gamma 1 is homotopic to gamma 2 and what is a simply connected uh, domain a simply connected domain is a domain where every closed path or any loop is homotopic to a point which means if you take any closed curve in that domain you can continuously deform it to a point that's what simple connectedness means okay so with this i think i'll uh, stop here we will see next week for other further lectures to look at the proofs of Cauchy theorem and other things. Thanks a lot.